Welcome to the first episode of Let's Talk Space, the show where I will talk about the past, present, and future of space travel, space exploration, and astronomy. I will try to release a new video every week. Now if there is a topic you would like me to cover, leave a suggestion in the comment section below or tweet it to at 10 flat media. A grounded space shuttle is no easy baby to move, and this operation at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California was the first indication to the public that the space shuttle program is expanding. Now the United States Air Force is about to introduce its own space shuttle, not one but a regular series of launches from these new facilities far from Florida, so that in theory at least we could have two shuttles in orbit next year. And as an indication of how much the space shuttle is becoming a part of everyday life, these facilities could handle up to ten launchings a year. In 1972, when the space shuttle program started, NASA planned to have two launch sites, one at Cape Canaveral in Florida and another launch site in California. The launch site in California would have launched the space shuttle from Vandenberg Air Force Base in Lompoc, which is in southwestern California, north of Santa Barbara and Los Angeles. Construction on SLC-6 started in 1966 and was originally intended for the Manned Orbital Laboratory, but was never completed. In 1975, SLC-6 was approved as the launch site for the space shuttle. NASA spent over four billion dollars to modify the site to accommodate the space shuttle. SLC-6 was declared operational on October 15, 1985 despite the fact a lot more additional work was needed to make the launch site operational. The Experimental Space Shuttle Orbiter Enterprise was used to test the launch configurations in October of 1985. This was the first and only time a space shuttle would be seen on the launch site. STS-62A was scheduled to be launched from SLC-6 on July 15, 1986. This mission never took place due to the shuttle fleet being grounded after the tragic loss of the Space Shuttle Challenger on January 28, 1986 after an O-ring failure caused the vehicle to explode 73 seconds after liftoff killing all seven astronauts. The Challenger disaster hastened the inevitable. With NASA retooling the Space Shuttle program, they decided to move all launch operations to Cape Canaveral in Florida, and in 1988 all space shuttle assets were directed to be moved to Cape Canaveral in Florida. Florida is the superior launch site. The space shuttle program repurposed the infrastructure from the Apollo program including the vehicle assembly building, crawler transporters, and launch complex 39 consisting of two launch pads. The infrastructure that was used for the Apollo program was used to launch the mighty Saturn V to the moon. The Saturn V was far larger and more powerful than the space shuttle. Every manned Apollo mission after Apollo 7 was launched from Launch Complex 39. This meant that the infrastructure was sufficient and strong enough to facilitate space shuttle launches. In the end, SLC-6 would never have worked. It represented the original concept of the shuttle program. When the shuttle program was in its infancy, NASA planned to launch a space shuttle mission every two weeks. SLC-6 was a much smaller launch site than Launch Complex 39 in Florida. The launch pad was far too close to the shuttle processing building, which also served as launch control. Everything at the launch site looks too small and almost comical compared to the launch facilities at Cape Canaveral in Florida. After shuttle operations were permanently moved to Florida, the launch site was converted to an Athena slash Delta IV launch site. Most of the infrastructure that was built for the shuttle program was repurposed and is still there and is used to launch Athena slash Delta IV rockets, delivering imaging satellites into Earth orbit. SLC-6 represented the extremely imaginative and ambitious goals of NASA back when they first proposed the Space Shuttle program. 